Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over my experience job hunting in the last year. I recently moved to a different state, and because of that, I had to leave my last job, which was remote. I just was out of scope of the amount of hours you had to live within that, that certain area. And along with this, my partner, who has 16 years of experience in software developer, was also job hunting. Let me tell you, the 2024 job market has 100% changed and it is not as easy as it once was. It took me three months to find a role and then it took my partner with 16 years of software development experience seven months to, to find a role. He's never gone two weeks without being able to find a job. So I'm going to go over some of my learnings and findings from both his job hunt and also my job hunt in this weird, crazy tech market that we are in. The first issue, which has never been an issue, but it is now, is that everyone is using chat GPT for their resume. It's making HR and the hiring manager and the technical team unsure about who is actually qualified and who actually is not. So if you're just using chat GPT to regurgitate whatever the job posting says and putting all of these keywords in, that's really not enough. In fact, everyone is doing that, right? And everyone's resume looks the same. So essentially, the advice that I was given by the HR is, number one, you need to apply at the company site. So don't go through LinkedIn or Indeed or Glassdoor because there are a lot of bots there just auto-applying for people and also scammers. And so there's just too much junk to sort through. Then the second one is try to send a message to HR or someone on that hiring team for that job. So I actually got an interview at Carnegie Mellon because I sent human resources a message about how I was qualified for that job and how I would make a great asset to their team, not just that I wanted a job, right? So how are you actually beneficial to that team? And I got an interview at Carnegie Mellon that way, which never would have happened otherwise. The second issue that I had when job hunting for a cybersecurity job was that I actually have a really broad background of skills. So I'm more of a generalist than I am very specific, and which is good for some roles, but not in this job market because they want specific skills. For instance, I would get disqualified before reaching the second round of interviews just through the phone screening because I didn't have design experience or I didn't have a, a certain vendor. Like I understand the concepts, I just didn't understand the tool that they were using basically. And so I wouldn't make it to the next round. And these were remote roles. So the competition for these roles were very high. Gaining a specific expertise and becoming an obvious expert in something will put you ahead of 99% of people, including myself. Speaking on that, knowing a specific skill set will also help you a lot with the interview. An issue that I had, which I completely forgot that I would have, is that because I have such a broad background and have basically worked in so many different domains, some the, basically they can ask me about anything on my resume. The thing is I like forget things all of the time. Like I wish I had one of those memories where I could just regurgitate things. I just don't. And so it made the interviews extremely difficult because I was studying for everything because I'm a generalist and I'm not really known for any specific thing. Yeah. So learn from my mistake. The next thing that I experienced is remote jobs are very competitive right now. And I gave up on finding a remote job and I only looked locally for jobs. So I was moving cities. And so where I moved actually doesn't have a high, doesn't have a lot of tech jobs. It's not like a tech city. And so I only, yeah. And so I only applied to roles that were on site or hybrid local to the city because the competition would be, because the competition is a lot less. And the only reason that I got my current role is because it was on site and a lot of people just aren't willing to go on site. So 
I go on site, right? Poor me, I have to go to an office. Also, my coworker who started at the same time with me also had the same experience. He like followed up and see who they actually hired for those remote roles. Essentially, they're like senior level people taking entry level remote roles. So that's your competition, right? So life is more than money and people have caught on to these remote roles. So my partner job was advertised only in as on site. But once he actually got the job and the offer, it turns out it's just completely remote and he only has to go to the office whenever, like there's no set time dates he has to go. So they're also just labeling in their local city. So then they get less applications and less chat GPT regurgitated crappy resumes that everyone basically has. The next one is that you really need to know exactly what you're applying for. You need to know who your basically your customer or employer is going to be and what industry. The thing with cybersecurity is every industry has a different lingo. So if you are going to work for the medical field, there are words such as HIPAA that will only really apply to a medical type of cyber job. If you want to work for the federal government, there is a specific set of lingo such as NIST 853 that are very specific to the federal government. Now, if you were wanted to go a private sector job, you would, instead of using NIST 853, for instance, you would use NIST 171. So these very specific lingo terms for different industries is very specialized knowledge and shows that you know exactly what you're talking about. So make sure to know the customer and the set of words for each industry because they're all different. And I would just start with whatever industry that you're in. I wouldn't change the industry because you know that lingo. For instance, I don't really know anything about the medical industry. And if I were to go apply for them, I wouldn't use my current resume because it's beefed up for a different type of industry, essentially. So make sure to know what exactly industry you're in because you 100% will be overlooked if you don't include this jargon for each industry. And yeah, so those are, that's essentially my learning. I also see a really big push back to live events and in-person events. I would just look at your local community and see what career fairs they have going on because this online world is absolutely, I even see it in myself. I like no longer shop online. I always look for like local classes that I can take instead of ones online just because there's just so much. And that is also what employers would definitely prefer if you lived in the city that they are located. And if you can just talk to someone in person, you're already going to be leads ahead of a lot of people who are just applying online to jobs with a thousand other applicants. Also, if you are interested, and also I do have a totally free training below that shows how you can upskill yourself into cybersecurity. Totally free. You can check that out below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.